All right, News 6's James Rivero is live in Brevard County, an area that had several tornado warnings earlier today. Uh, James, we have received reports that there's been damage in Cocoa. What are you seeing out in that area? Cocoa Beach, Lisa and Ginger. So this is where the area of the tornado warning was earlier. Now around that time at 5.30 this afternoon, I was in Cape Canaveral. I was looking to the sky. I didn't see anything. I thought we dodged a bullet. And then we came here and we got a totally different idea of what really happened. So I want to point out where I'm at. I'm at the Publix south of 520. There's two Publixes in Cocoa Beach. So not the Publix that's north of 520 by the pier. We're at the Publix that's south of the 520. Now, the Publix structure and the rest of the stores over there, they look just fine. They are separate, however, from the two businesses that are right here where I'm standing. This is the Supercuts in Cocoa Beach and also the Florida Eye Associates. So the Supercuts, the lights are on. That's about all that's on because the damage is pretty extreme, guys. Severe damage, if not totally destroyed. Likely to be confirmed to be tornado damaged. So Corey will take the camera and he'll give you a look inside as best he can. Can you guys see that in here? Can you, can you see just how bad that is? Yeah, that's, that's awful. Oh my, that's a bit, yeah, that's the Supercuts. Wow. It was a Supercuts, right. Mm. So the Supercuts in Cocoa Beach, right off of A1A, and there's just shattered glass everywhere. I'll point out, when you look at this building, the foundation of the building, the building itself looks fine, but the entire building was designed with glass all around it. Mm. And I think that was the problem in this case, why all the windows just got shattered and blown out. Oh. And the damage extends around 360 degrees of the entire building. So now we're walking down to the Florida Eye Associates. This was the eyeglass store here in Cocoa Beach that Corey's gonna show you next. And just like the super cuts, the windows are blown out so we can get our camera right inside and we can show you the extent of the damage. Just, just tell me again, Ginger and Lisa, do you see everything we're looking at? How's oh, it going? Yeah. We do? definitely Very see clearly. it. That is heartbreaking when you when you see that. Are you seeing a case of it hit one place and then missed another? Well, I think that's, yeah, what I was just trying to explain about. The rest of the shopping center here looks fine, but these two businesses yeah. are in this sort of a duplex where they're separate. They're closer to A1A. And beyond A1A, uh, at, the light is out right there at A1A and Banana River that you can probably notice. And there's some damage to guardrails too. Now, fortunately, I don't believe anybody was here. That is some good news, but you can obviously tell this was the waiting room. And it looks like maybe, I mean, they didn't board up obviously. There's no sign of any plywood or any hurricane shutters. Yeah. Although, I mean, I just noticed they did wrap their computers in plastic, but that was about it. And so when all of this was happening, more. James, when there were those tornado warnings earlier today, where were you and Corey? So Corey and I were about, I want to say three or four miles to the north. That's the distance. We were at the Spring Hill Suites. Spring Hill Suites is one of the newer, modern hotels. If you want to be anywhere during a storm, that's probably the safest place you can be. And we were under the carport where you would drop yourselves off there in front of the hotel. And it did get pretty rough. It got really rough around 5.30 or 5.45, a lot of rain. It was very continuous. And I looked to the sky. I was trying to spot if we could see a tornado forming. At that time, I was also listening to our broadcast and Jonathan and Candace were saying, I wanna keep walking around the building just so we can show you as much damage as we can, by the way. They were calling it a water spout at that time. But I also remember as we continued our coverage, they said that that water spout was making its way toward land. We took pictures of our port camera. So maybe that's where it was. Maybe that's, maybe that's what happened. But it was about six o'clock then that the, uh, it got calm suddenly. And I thought we were, we were out of the woods, but you always have that waiting period after you get some activity to see if there was really damage. And yeah, we found it here in Cocoa Beach off of A1A. The police were here earlier. Uh, they've left for now. And the only other people we're seeing here right now are, are other media or just people in the community who are curious because about an hour and a half ago when we first got here, I did do a Facebook Live. So that was me for the first time letting people know what happened. And as that's circulating and 
as other reports are circulating from other outlets about what happened here. People have been coming out to see the damage. Again, if you're just joining us, it looks to be confirmed tornado damage here at the Supercuts and the Florida Eye Associates, the eyeglass store in Cocoa Beach. It's at the Publix Plaza. Maybe you just drive by here all the time and you just know the shopping center for the Publix and you're not as familiar with the other stores, but it's right here. It's right in front of A1A and Banana River, I believe, is the cross section. It's across the street from the Hilton and the Twin Towers condos. And again, Lisa and Ginger, we wanted to do a 360 around the building because the damage is very extensive. It's very severe. So we're going to peek in over here where we can give you another look inside it. What's left of the old supercuts in Cocoa Beach. Yeah, James, I don't know if you can pan your camera just south of you, but there's the Wells Fargo Bank uh, just south of you. And we were seeing pictures and reports of that building Let's also that sustaining uh, pretty extensive damage, roof damage along there. I don't know if you've seen that today. Yeah. Thank you, Lisa. Yeah, we can point that out now, too. There's an urgent care facility. So the damage really extends around the A1A and Banana River Boulevard, I believe, is the crossroad here. The guardrail damage. And then across the street. Uh, I'm not looking at the Wells Fargo, actually. I'm looking at the urgent care building, the medical group building. But they, too, it looks like had their windows blown out. And it looks like, uh, it looks like there's people already up there trying to board up for what we still have to go through because of course this was just the start of the bad weather and we're not going to see the storm pass through Brevard County until the overnight hours and when it's here as we expect it will be about a category one so yeah I can see them with their drills and again I'm not I'm not looking at the Wells Fargo okay the Wells Fargo I think is at the intersection and the lights are out I think I'm looking at it right here I think it's that building Corey but we won't be able to give people too good of a view, at least not this second, unless we were to cross the street because it looks like their lights are out. Yeah, that's the Wells Fargo building right here. And it's actually my first time taking a look. And if we got up close, we might have something to show you, but I don't really see anything, Corey. Yeah, I don't, I don't see anything that looks like the damage would the damage would be comparable anyways to the supercuts or the eyeglass store but yeah certainly on the second story there of the urgent care building it's shade tree dermatology and urgent care on the second story there yeah you can see some more damage up there windows were blown out and there's currently some people right now doing their best to put something in those windows some plywood before the rest of the storm comes through the rest of the night prevent any further damage but yeah this is really the first damage of any kind significantly that I've been able to report here in Brevard County yesterday was just a calm day basically uh, the only breaking news we had was that the Health First Hospital in Cape Canaveral the, the Cape Canaveral Hospital as they call it it's in Cocoa Beach that they were evacuating 27 patients just out of a precaution that was really all we had to report yesterday and we had the tornado warning suddenly. Um, you know, you really didn't hear a whole lot from Brevard County's emergency management updates uh, when it came to the possibility of tornadoes, a, a little bit. They focused on what they expected from the storm itself, I think, once it got here. So winds in the area of maybe 70 or 80 miles per hour being a cat one, and maybe rainfall in the neighborhood of three to six inches. And they mentioned maybe as much as a foot in the worst areas are those those low-lying flood, uh, those areas that are prone to flooding. Um, but I did see a post this afternoon from Cocoa Beach's mayor, Keith Capizzi, and he was talking on Facebook how he was really concerned about these tornado warnings because they're sudden, they're unpredictable, they can cause a lot of damage very quickly. And yeah, as we've been showing you now for the past five minutes, uh, that's what's happened to the Supercuts in the Florida eyewear store. While we're still with you, Lisa and Ginger, why don't we just take a, another walk around the building? Maybe people haven't, maybe people weren't with us five minutes ago when we, when we started our report. And we can give you another look inside. The, uh, the look inside the eyewear store is striking. 
How you doing, sir? Another gentleman out here to, to take a look. Are we still with them, Corey? Okay. Okay, we're still with you guys, apparently. Are we, are we still with you, Lisa and Ginger? Yeah, we can hear you, James. I, I'm just concerned. You guys okay, be careful great. when this stuff picks up again because there's a lot of broken glass that right. can go flying. So please be That's careful. That's right. concern. Yeah. Yep. I mean, and James. Yeah, well, you, you, you know that we have, our, um, we have our policy here that we're going to be in a safe place at a certain time. Yeah. Uh, Candace wants to ask a question, of course. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, um, at the end of the day, that uh, tornado warned area was the one in uh, Brevard County that came in off the ocean. But one thing that Jonathan and I were able to pinpoint yeah, right. during that uh, during that warned time there was that we did pick up that debris yeah. uh, kind of detector. Mm -hmm. And that's when uh, the radar basically picks up something that is not the typical that, raindrop. Yeah. So I'm wondering if that, I, I would have to go back and look and compare locations and stuff like that. But that certainly seems to be the one that certainly caught our attention more mm -hmm. than the other tornado warnings when it came to all the other mm -hmm. um, kind of red flags. So unfortunately, that could have been some of the debris that was yeah. flying around that the radar did end up picking up. And that's unfortunately what happens when a storm moves through at night. Mm -hmm. You can't see mm -hmm. all of the damage until the sun comes up. And I think when, you know, they're able to get out there in the morning and, and see look some at of that, that Wells Fargo. You're going to yeah. see. Yeah, that we were seeing some pictures gone, yeah. earlier today of the roof just, and yeah. it's on clickorlando.com. Maybe he's um, on the other side. That, yeah. that, yeah. And it's hard yeah. to see at night, too. So yeah. that's the other And to your issue. point, you got to be careful because we still have that potential for some strong mm -hmm. winds out there, and you just don't know. And, and that's something I really want to kind of hone in on right now because mm -hmm. – uh, I feel like the live shot of Eric Von Aiken made people go, "Oh, the, the storm wasn't the storm wasn't that bad, right? A, yes. a landfall." So we talked about this storm coming in layers, okay? And the the concern for the more the afternoon was the tornadoes. So that threat is now starting to go down. We do have that tornado watch that will. Uh, be done at about nine o'clock this this evening. Okay. Now the next concern is going to be flash flooding. Mm. We are still talking about rainfall, especially along the I-4 corridor, up to about a foot mm. of rain in some locations. So yeah. we are still talking about the flooding threat. That is yeah. still going to be there because at the end of the day, when you look at the, uh, at the radar, there is still so much moisture on uh. the northern side of this system that that is certainly all have, it has to go somewhere. Yeah. Right? This moisture doesn't just dissipate. Then the second concern is there in areas of Osceola, Polk, and Brevard County, where that center of Milton's going to go. Like you said, all that debris, all that glass is yeah. going to pick up yeah. just because that's where the core is expected to go. Now, it won't be a Category 3, thankfully, but we're still talking about very strong, yeah, winds, strong winds, hurricane force winds, especially in that zone. So, again, it comes in layers. So don't let your guard down just because we had an eventful afternoon. The and landfall didn't, yeah, didn't seem very oop. wild and crazy. But at yeah. the end of the day, the, the system is a wonky one. Yeah, and that's you, what I have you'll to get lulled everybody. into a false sense of security. 